<laughs> Morning. In the Sicha that we're going to be discussing, Parshas Miketz, Hanukkah, it's an incredible Sicha in the fact that this is one of the things that the Rebbe puts a great emphasis on that is not something that's found as much in other places. It is found on occasion, and that is location, location, location. Everybody knows. I've heard this from people in the real estate field. And the Rebbe puts a big emphasis on where the Rambam writes halachas, where he places the halachas. And this is an is a phenomenal example of that where the Sikha is based on many other things, but this is a central theme of the Sikha and how the Rebbe explains it in such a phenomenal way that uh, opens up the whole halacha in the Rama. So, <clears throat> let us begin. The Rambam and Hilchis Megillah Herig Dalad Halacha Yud Dalad says the following halacha. If one had in front of him, in other words, he had a choice. Can't do any more. He doesn't have enough money. He either lights Shabbos candles or he writes lights near Hanukkah. It's Friday evening. Which one comes first? But then the Ramam adds another point. Now, again, this is Hilchas Hanukkah, remember. If one has Shabbos candles, money for Shabbos candles, or availability, he can go either get Shabbos candles, or he can go and get Kiddush, buy Kiddush, wine for Kiddush. In both these cases, the Ramam Paskins, based on a Gemara and Shabbos, that Shabbos candles come first. And the Ramam goes into an elongated explanation as to why. So he says, Shari Hashem Nimchak Lase Shalom Benishlishta. The name of Hashem is erased by a Satan to prove her innocence in order to make peace between the man and the woman. So God allows his name to be erased. One. Two. Peace is so great because that's the whole purpose of the Torah. He brings a pasuk for that. Everything that there is shown about peace. Now, let me just take some note that in the Gemara, when the Gemara asks this question, the Gemara says that Ner Hanukkah is odif, is better, more important. The Rambam uses the word Mebesei Kaidim. I'm saying Ner Besei Odiv. Um and and the Raman brings Nerbe and basically Kedem. So, what does this Gemara say? The Gemara also says, Gemara asks, what comes? What the Gemara says that Nerbe say comes first because of Shalom Bais. Now we've uh, in, in grown accustomed to the word Shalom Bais, meaning when there are marital problems. But that's not what it means here. Rashi explains, Shalom Bayis means that the family is, with when you, in darkness, the family is uncomfortable because they're sitting in darkness. And there's also the danger that they will fall, they will get hurt with, with uh, in items that they can't see in their path. So, what does that have to do with <laughs> with, with, with Shalom Bayis of of, of, of of Satan where we're talking about a husband and a wife who are, who are where there's a question of her um, faithfulness to him? What, what does this have to do with falling and <laughs> sitting in the dark? Okay, those, those are issues that the Rebbe has with the Rambam vis-a-vis -vis the Gemara. But then he goes on to some, to, to the main, I think, I believe, the main point. This din 
is brought in Hilchus Hanukkah, which comes at the end of Halachas of Zmanim. Whereas Hilchus Shabbos comes at the beginning of Halachas. A word about this. Why? That's where it should be. He'll tell me, well, he's talking about Ne'er Hanukkah. But good, that's not the only halacha he brings here. He brings the halacha of, uh, of Kiddush and their, their Shabbos, which has nothing to do with Hanukkah. And it's only brought here because we're talking about Sholomites. And if you look, Dr. Shulchan Taka mentions it either in both places, mentioned in both places, in Ilkha Shabbos and Ilkha Shabbos. Now, the Rambam does not mention things usually in two places, but he usually mentions in the first place. Why do you wait too long to mention it? Allah could have been said in Ilkha Shabbos, and it would be just as effective. <laughs> okay. And especially, again, th- th- that there's a point here in this halacha that has nothing to do with Hanukkah. Now, I want to... The, 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 the Rebbe takes us through a bit to understand where Shalom Bayes comes in here altogether with Ner Shabbos. In all of Hilchis Shabbos, there isn't a mention that the purpose of lighting candles is because of Shalom Bayes. In Perik Hay, Halacha Alev and Hilchis Shabbos, he writes, it's part of Oinik Shabbos. It's pleasure. In Paragalamid, he writes, it's part of honoring Shabbos. Maybe he was honored to Shabbos. Nothing mentioned about people being uncomfortable, people being um, sitting in in darkness is something that's not comfortable. And, and, and it comes in Hilchas Hanukkah suddenly. Shalom Bayes takes the main role, doesn't mention a word about the other thing. It's obvious that if you were to try to ask anybody, why do we light candles on Shabbos? It's not for Shalom Bayes. It's for covered and anything of Shabbos. However, Shalom Bayes is affected. But this is not the reason for so why suddenly when we're coming to the issue of Ner Hanukkah, Ner Shabbos, do we discuss Shalom Bayis? And that's the Gemara that only talks about it, Shalom Bayis. So here's the, the ingenious concept that the Rebbe introduces to us, is that the Shalom Bayis is only because of Ner Hanukkah. And that's why he goes into the lengthy explanation, whereas the Gemara does not give any lengthy explanation. What is that Shalom Bayes? And goes into to, 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 to erasing the name of the Abishta and God lost Shalom because Hanukkah is about the whole player. And therefore, this is the way you accomplish Hanukkah by making peace. In other words, According to the Rambam, we're not doing an odif. We're not pushing away Hanukkah because of Shabbos. We are accomplishing that which Hanukkah comes to represent with lighting the Shabbos candles and bring out peace in the home. And that's why he brings the story of the Saita. Because what are we doing? We are erasing God's holy name. Why? For the main purpose of Shalom, which is the most important thing. So the Ramah writes Kedem, not Odif. And that's why he writes that the whole Torah was given to, for peace, because that's the whole Torah. The whole Torah is represented in Hanukkah. Hanukkah is about the whole Torah. That's why this din is written in Ilkhaz Hanukkah, because it's, it's, a, it's a part of the Hanukkah experience. By saying that Sholem bias comes first. And where do we see this Hanukkah experience of being the whole Torah? So, 
in the beginning of Hilkas Hanukkah, he writes, the Ramam writes, that in the second temple, the second place on English, when Yavon, the Greeks, were ruled over Israel, they made decrees and they tried destroying the Jewish laws. The people shouldn't learn Torah. People shouldn't do mitzvahs. Till God had put the mercy on them and he saved them and the children of Kashmanai, Gehanim, Dalim killed them and saved the Jews. And that's why Rama writes, they we established the mitzvah of Hanukkah. Is to uh, days of, of happiness and hollow is in order to commemorate the saving of the Jewish people in a process of keeping Torah in mitzvahs. So the whole idea of Hanukkah, the main idea, not the, whole, the main idea of Hanukkah, Torah mitzvahs. The second aspect of Hanukkah, lighting candles, but that's the simcha and all of Hanukkah. And even in the candles, that's the most expressed also, as we find in many places. So that is the gist of the Sikha. And really, you know, it gives you a lot there. But then the Rebbe goes into a avenue, which we're going to discuss a little more in detail. And that's the area that we're going to spend time. And it's very often that in a Sikha of this magnitude, there are so many different aspects that the Rebbe talk, touches on, but here he seems to glaze through it, over it, and one can easily just run by it, but I, I believe it's something that should be discussed and, and a, analyzed. So then the Rebbe goes on to explain that the concept of Shabbos, now, if somebody would ask any of us, what is Shabbos? No. Some people will tell you they to sleep. <laughs> but generally, the challenge of Shabbos to most people is the restrictions of Shabbos. <clears throat> and Shabbos is seen as a restrictive day. A day that doesn't allow us to do a lot. And whatever the Torah doesn't allow, the Chacham came along and added up a, lit a litany of Items that you cannot do. So that it comes and says, no, that's not what Shabbos is about. The Rambam and Perik, Aleph, Halacha, Aleph, and Yitzchah Shabbos, right? Shvisam, and Shvim, and Halacha, Mitzvah, Saseh. The idea that you don't do work on Shabbos is Mitzvah, Saseh. Shunem, Arbeim, and Shittish. Now, what about Malacha? Whoever does Malacha has, has nullified that. That, that mitzvah of Shvisa. So, the Rebbe stresses a, a, a point which we will discuss soon. Even though most of the halachas of Shabbos are about not doing, don't do this and don't do that, don't do this and don't do that. But that's not what the, the Shabbos is about. Shabbos is about Mrs. Asay. <laughs> the idea of resting on Shabbos is not about not doing something, not doing malacha. It's experiencing rest. Now, what that means is a discussion on its own. But as we know, the Gemara says, and Rashi brings in a Chumash, that the world had everything after the six days of creation. God created everything in those six days. But there was something missing in the world. And what was missing? Menucha. Came Shabbos, came Menucha. And then, done. So Menucha is a positive experience. And it doesn't mean sleeping. But that can affect Menucha, but that's not what Menucha is. So Shabbos, which on the surface seems to be a lot of negativity related to Shabbos, about negative things, is really all about a positive. Now, if you ask any person, what's Hanukkah about? Well, most people will tell you 
donuts, latkes, but that's not really what Hanukkah is about. It's about lighting candles, simcha, hollow. No, says the Rebbe. Hanukkah is about taking away the decrees against the Jews. Negating the decrees. Yes, we have a bunch of positive actions that come from that. <clears throat> so what we see here is what on the surface looks like the focus is on the positive. It's really a removal of the negative. And on the surface looks like a negative is really only a result of the positive. So, right, Ne'er Shabbos is not about Shalom Bais. It's not about not, 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 not being in pain and not tripping over things. Ne'er Shabbos is about Einig and Kovit, as we said, pleasure and honor. But that's not the main thing. That, that's that, but as a result of that, you remove a negative. Ne'er Hanukkah is reverse. It's tack uh, to show the nace. But main thing is to, the, to nullify the decrees against Torah. Okay, so now we we'll come back to the bottom line. So when our question arises, we have Ner Hanukkah and Ner Shabbos. So we say that the result of Hanukkah, of Ner Shabbos, which brings about Sholem, which brings about a physical peace. So that is greater than Ner Hanukkah. And that becomes greater than Ner Hanukkah, which only is there to negate the destruction of, of, of Torah, which is Sholem. So that's why he brings the story of Satan. That even the greatest, holiest things that brings holiness into the world doesn't matter. That's not the most important thing. What brings the most holiness into the world is peace. Not the name of Hashem, the peace. That's what brings the greatest holiness into the world. Okay, that is the, I mean, obviously there's a lot more detail in the Sikha and there's a lot more points, but I want to take a few moments and analyze what the Rebbe says and based on the Ramban as we saw that the Isser Malacha is is is, is, is Shvisa, comes from the Mitzvah of Shvisa, which is the idea of Menucha. Now what does that mean? How, how do we understand that? And how do we relate that? So we're now interesting Allah and Rama. In Perik of Aleph, Allah Aleph, in Hilche Shabbos, the Rama writes, Neymar B'Tayra Tishbois. The Torah says, Tishbois, the same thing he writes here, Shri Tishbois. So we learn from there, even things that are not Melacha, Chayiv Lishbois Mehem. You are required to rest. And now he says, hey, So what is it? Is there ice in the bottom? I'm getting into that. I'm just basically what it means is there's a Torah view of Shabbos. And due to that Torah view of Shabbos, the Chacham came along and said, now let's analyze what fits into that view. Man, Dvarim, Asur, Nation, Daimil, Melachim. And so on. So that's the standard Rambam, the Magen Mishnah comes along and says, the Torah told us Malachis. And all the Malachis till then in Elke Shabbos. All that. But a person can say, you know what? I got a day off. I got a lot to do. I need to move my furniture around. I need to do this. I need to do that. There's tons of things you can do. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a malach. It's not a malach. So comes along. Terry says, Tishbos. And 
and therefore don't do all those things. So what is Tishvais? This or that? How can it be both? The Ramban in Chumash and he says um, he struggles. What, what exactly does it mean? Does it mean it's the rice or the is it, And he goes through this whole thing. That, that's what the Magen Mishnah refers to. We'll talk about the Ramban. So. The Lechem Mishnah brings the Magen Mishnah and he writes, The Torah forbade full Malachist. But anything less than that, the Torah didn't ask. According to the Sheer and the things that were awesome. But those that are less, Torah didn't ask. So the Torah said Tishbos. Even if it's not Malach. It's not a malacha that you're that you would be, uh, re, you know, executed for or, or had to bring a carbon for and so forth. And that's what, whatever that doesn't, and, and, and then there's a second thing, then the Chacham Master thing. That's the way he learns it. So when the Torah says that I'm feeling malacha, that's Bachas Mikashir. And that's part of the Pasuk Tishbas. And then there is a new thing that has nothing to do with Tishbas. But the, like, the Mishnah doesn't learn like that. Like the Mishnah learns that it's all part of Tishbas. All the things you're not allowed to do part of Tishbas. In other words, not moving furniture is part of Tishbas. Now the Ramban in Pasha's Emmer goes through a long discussion and ends up saying that the per that on Shabbos you should not be busy doing other things. The, sh- the taich of Shabbos or Shtishvais is there should be menucha from all toil and work. And the Ritva explains the Ramban as follows that according to the Torah, there's a din of Tishvais that not to allow Shabbos to become a weekday. And the Chachamim came along and described what that means. So, we have two halachas, Perik Aleph, which tells us malacha, don't do because of Tishbez. Perik Chaf Aleph tells us don't turn the day into a weekday. So, how does the same word mean two different things? <laughs> so, perhaps... That what the Ritva is saying is, and simil- the idea that the Rebbe mentions the Menucha, that Tishbais is that you are obligated to turn Shabbos into a Yem Menucha, a day of Menucha. I don't want to say the word rest because it's a misnomer. If a person is busy, and these are the words of the of the Ritva, the Ramban, all day with things that are not holy, and he's busy moving and running and coming. I mean, I, I don't know if it has to be literally all day or most of the day, but a good portion of the day he's involved in non-essential things and things that are not menucha acts. So he has turned it into a yin chayil and not a yin menucha. According to this, if a person will generally rest, and that generally will have a day of rest, eh, the middle will go and do things that uh, do something that's not menuchadik. He hasn't really undone the din of yay menuch. So perhaps there are two aspects. There is a general concept that this has to be seen as a day of rest. And what will disturb that is taking it, not making it a day of rest. Not is it only seen. You have to make it into a day of rest. If you toil low a good portion of the day in things that are not restful in the word, I'm using the word restful in a, just as a, 
a word, but I don't really mean it. It's much more than that. Then you have undone the Menucha day, and that's what Tishbeis comes to teach you. Now, what exactly that is? The Chacham came along and gave you a, a litany of things that are considered not Menucha. Then, there's a new thing. Perk Aleph, he tells you, that there are things you don't need to do all day or most of the day or a good part of the day. That is the involvement. The act itself nullifies the menucha of the day. And that is Malach. They're both yei menucha. There are two types of yei menucha. There's a yei menucha where its involvement takes away the the uh, menucha. By being involved in moving furniture, by being involved in doing mukta acts, that's taking away the, 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 the tishbois. It's your, your, your focus on them and your involvement. But then there are acts that the act itself is what takes away, and that's malach. And that's what the Torah tells you. You learn from Malach Zamishkin, there are 39 malachis that destroy Menuch. And that's what the Rebbe is talking about. So, Perik Aleph and Perik of Aleph are really all about Menuch. They're all about Menuch. In Perik Aleph, an act of Menuch undoes Menuch. In Perik of Aleph, it's the involvement in things that the Chachamim have deemed unmenuchadik, unrestful, at getting involved in that, that will take away the menuch of Shabbat. So, getting back to the others he said, I, I think that's what he's trying to stress when he says that the whole idea of Shabbos is Shvisa. It's about menucha. It's about and Malach is also on the streets. And that's why the Ramam, interesting thing. All right, Which one is more important? The Bittl Mitzasev? What's going on here? No, no, no. That's secondary. The idea of 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 of, of Shvisa is what it's all about. The Isabel Malacha is the main thing is Bittl Mitzvah. You also I have a life and there's a lot of there, there are there are a lot of uh, terrible connotations to that, but that's not what it's about. That's not the main thing. It's interesting. When a person does Malacha, we consider him being Chal Shabbos. As we know, the famous Medrash, there's a sikha that the Rebbe speaks about. That there's a Medrash says, if a person was already did Melacha, perhaps he can do Melacha further. We learn out not like that. What would be the smart? The same thing. It's all under the day of Menucha. You undid the Menucha day. You undid the Menucha part. Everything's about Menucha. Having a day of Menucha. You undid it, maybe you can. The answer is no. <laughs> the day continues. <laughs> but that, those are all part of this idea. That, that, and this is what, it's so thrown in on a side note, but it's not a side note. Because this is the definition of Shabbos. And yet, that definition brings about a, removing a negative. And that is the Shalom bias, And that's why that overtakes everything else. Okay. Zeit gesund, stark, hat's Loch, Rabe, wie war's?